Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the simulation of Type E Chopper in MATLAB. So, this is a circuit diagram of Type E Chopper. It is also referred to as four quadrant chopper. The reason is very simple. It operates in all four quadrants with respect to voltage and current plane, or if you're talking with respect to motor as a load, it is with respect to speed torque plane. So, based on the motoring action, uh, if you're connecting motor as a load, uh, you will be categorically stating them as forward motoring, forward braking, reverse motoring, reverse braking, based on the uh, current and voltage current and voltage magnitudes or speed and torque magnitudes so based on that we can say uh, if it is positive or negative based on that we can justify that so uh, it basically operates in all four quadrants that is the speciality of this particular chopper and it is properly used in most of the industries uh, where uh, you want to interface a DC motor connected to this particular circuit so once uh, we have the circuit diagram and uh, how much quadrants it is supposed to uh, be operated uh, once we know that we will be able to simulate them let's go to MATLAB and get started with us. All right, here we are. Click on Simulink Library Browser and search for PowerGive block, which is one of the most important blocks for the simulation to take place. So add that block. We need voltage measurement as well, current measurement as well. Add these two blocks as well. Once this is done, we will be requiring a DC uh, voltage source. So uh, search for DC voltage and add the ones that are there in black, not the ones that are there in blue. Blue is used for uh, small signals and signals and pro systems, uh, di digital signal processing and a lot of other applications with respect to inverting amplifiers as such. So once this is done, uh, we will be requiring a MOSFET. So we are using MOSFET as a switch uh, instead of uh, a thyristor. Uh, you can use IG GBTs as well. Thyristor is not used because we need an external commutation circuit. Again, the cost of the circuit increases, the complexity of the circuit increases, and that's the reason why we're not going for that. Once that is done, we will be requiring a pulse. So search for pulse and uh, scroll a little down. Uh, you will be getting it right at the top as well. So add this block over here. Once this is done, uh, we will be uh, requiring scope in order to see how the waveform looks like. So search for scope, and uh, this is used to see how the waveform uh, is actually in our circuit. And once this is done we will be requiring a DC machine so search for DC machine this is basically a DC motor uh, so we will be adding this block and uh, we require a constant block as well uh, in order to give the value for TL which is the low torque uh, with respect to the DC motor so we'll be adding a constant block over here as well so we have added all the parameters all the blocks or components that we want with respect to our circuit so I'm just rearranging them in a particular fashion so that it's easy for us to connect the circuit according to our circuit diagram rotate this uh, using control R Disable the measurement port. We're not using that. Uh, copy paste this several times, uh, at least four times we need because uh, we use four switches in the circuit. We don't need freewheeling diodes because you, if you carefully observe MOSFET has freewheeling diode internally, even IGBTs have that feature as well. So we can, uh, we don't have to worry with respect to that. So I'll be connected and be connected uh, to this point and uh, I'm enclosing the circuit uh, such that DC source is connected to the supply terminals uh, in this particular fashion the MOSFETs are connected to the supply once this is done uh, we will be connecting the DC motor uh, at the load uh, we are using DC motor as a load we can even use RLE load and try it as well so uh, but this gives you a, a representation of how motor can be interfaced as well so that's the reason why I'm going with this uh, once this is done uh, we will be connecting uh, this at this point armature terminal should be connected to the load uh, in the other end of the load once this is done I will be connecting the the constant block which is usually given to be equal to one uh, we can change it based on our requirement we need to see the voltage we need to see the current current is usually connected in series ammeters are connected in series with a load in order to measure the current isn't it so any any current that you have to measure it should be connected in series and voltage across the two points that you want to and once that is done uh, we will be double clicking on the pulse generator block change the amplitude to 10 amplitude doesn't matter just to see in case you want to see the waveform um, it should scale according to the output that's the reason why I'm doing this 0 0.02 seconds I'm taking frequency to be equal to 50 1 by 50 is equal to 0 0.02 usually switching frequencies will be very high but but uh, nevertheless, I'm choosing it just for the sake of seeing the waveform clearly. That's it. I've uh, chosen this to be equal to 75. Uh, once this is done, copy paste another one. Uh, I'll be giving this to these two switches, uh, S1 and S2. And I'll be giving this to the next uh, two blocks that are two switches that are there. Double click on this. Few things that we need to change here is change the pulse width to 50 and uh, change the phase delay to 0 0.01 seconds. So 0 0.01 seconds, if you carefully observe why I'm doing this is 
theoretically we might study uh, s1 s2 should be on and s2 one s1 should be turned off and s2 will be on only when s2 is on it will operate in second quadrant or first quadrant depending upon its quadrant of operation so only having one switch on and looking at the output voltage is practically not possible uh, so and uh, the complexity of the circuit also increases if you are doing and trying to see the waveform in that particular case so we are not looking into that aspect what we are trying to do is we are uh, trying to have some overlap between these two switches and these two switches so after 0 0.01 also this switch will be conducting these two switches because 0 0.02 is the time period 75 percent pulse width we have given so 75 percent of 0 0.02 it will be slightly above one obviously so 0 0.01 so it, when it is slightly above 0 0.01 at some point all the four switches will be conducting so in order to give that overlapping uh, between the switches i have done that uh, so however we can carefully observe the waveform of how it looks like and justify how it operates in all the four quadrants so select this one um, and uh, i'll be giving dc source to be equal to 24 volt um, the field is required with respect to the dc machine so i'll be connecting it with respect to these two terminals over here and uh, the value i'll choose it to be equal to 300 volt the reason is very simple because the rating that i have selected is for 300 volt field supply that's the reason so once this is done select the simulation time to five seconds because these are motor loads isn't it so dynamically varying loads uh, need some settling time so transients will be there so uh, once this is done we will be clicking on run in order to check how the waveform looks like we can uh, double click on the scope so that gives you uh, the visual display of both the voltage and current uh, waveforms so now uh, we can uh, look at this by zooming in this particular portion of the waveform so I will be uh, saying that it operates in four quadrants so how do we justify that isn't it so from here the current is positive the voltage is also positive so V and I positive first quadrant Consequently, at some point here, current is negative, voltage is negative. Can we say it is uh, operating in um, the third quadrant because both current and voltage is negative? So uh, once that is done, uh, if you observe carefully at this point, current is still negative, voltage is positive. When the current is negative and voltage is positive, can we say it is operating in second quadrant? So uh, consequently, at some point, uh, the voltage is positive and it gradually decreases and it becomes negative when it becomes negative current is still positive so can we say it operates in the fourth quadrant so based on this we can say it operates in all the four quadrants this is only one possible way in which you can uh, demonstrate all the four quadrant operation in one particular waveform but practically uh, we have to ideally design a circuit uh, so that you get a DC waveform this is not a DC waveform if you carefully observe the output voltage so you have to design according to the requirement but in order to to show how it operates in all the four quadrants this waveform will pretty much sum it up so i hope uh, the simulation of uh, type e chopper is understood in case you have any questions feel free to reach out if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates uh, thanks for watching this video we'll meet you guys in another video